President Biden's top science advisor, Dr. Eric Lander, has announced his resignation. And this comes after Politico reported that he was rude, demeaning, and cruel to staffers. He's stepping down hours after the White House said he'd be allowed to keep his job. That decision seemed at odds with Biden's day one vow to fire any staffers who mistreated their colleagues. And here is Press Secretary Jen Psaki at the lectern just about 24 hours ago. Senior White House officials conveyed directly to Dr. Lander that his behavior was inappropriate and the corrective actions that were needed, uh, which, were, uh, which the White House will monitor for compliance moving forward. I'd also note that Dr. Lander also sent a message to uh, his staff uh, outlining some of the steps he's intending to take to build a respectful work environment, and certainly we would encourage those. And here was the president who was laying down the law on day one. When I hear you treat another colleague with disrespect, talk down to someone, I promise you I will fire you on the spot. On the spot. No ifs, ands, or buts. Everybody, everybody is entitled to be treated with decency and dignity. Who wants to tell him? Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor, host of Get Tammy Bruce on Fox Nation. So, you know, it's problematic for a leader to say something like that, because that was so huge at that time. There were like a thousand people on that Zoom and wow, accountability for stay, blah, 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 blah. What does it do now that that didn't happen? See, part of why he was saying that was because part of the campaign was how awful a person Donald Trump was that he was mean to everyone in the country, and he had mean tweets, and he made everybody feel bad, and everybody was crying, and ooh, we're gonna be nice, we're the nice ones. Well, that wasn't true. None of that was true. Many things that he said were not true. And in this case, what's fascinating is, this is not the first time we've seen this problem. This is Kamala Harris's problem, too. We have a, a, oh, the woman who's in, the Vice President of the United States, the first woman Vice President, uh, uh, both of these individuals, everyone in the Biden administration, my goodness, you're in, in the White House, you're running the United States. And for some reason, there is this bullying that is so extreme, people who made a commitment to you are leaving. We've seen that in Harris's office. In this case, he's in the cabinet. It's a position that they've made a cabinet advisory position. He's an older man. He, he knows about attitudes. Why would you, in a dynamic which should be exciting and creative and moving forward where you are able to help people, uh, that you would revert to such a dynamic where he admits that it was everybody, he treated everyone horribly, he was mean, he was awful. Why would you do that? What is it that creates this environment with individuals in that kind of a position who are Democrats who present themselves as the solution, as bringing people together and making everything uh, uh, better and happier. It's the opposite. Well, it's so interesting because when you were first talking, I wondered who exactly you were talking about because those bullying allegations have been there. And we saw this, this president bully a reporter by cussing That's him right. out. That's right. Great point. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I was a little... But, but let's And the get... town hall, remember the town hall, calling some guy fat. And the, it was these, these breaks. Awful breaks of the, the nature of the treatment, the treatment of, of our reporters in the White House. Uh, just, it, it's, it's a remarkable thing that we see with the president sometimes. So, but I do want to stick with what you brought up about Kamala Harris, our vice president, and, and how she's been fighting off allegations of bullying in her office. Um, and, and, you know, her staff says it's not happening. But eight staffers have left in a matter of months, and one reportedly called her a soul-destroying boss. <laughs> but her allies hope wow. a new year and a new team can help rebuild her image. One supporter says of the shakeup, quote, I wouldn't call it a reboot. I'd call it chapter two. They were hoping, I think, to give uh, uh, Mr. Lander a, a chapter two. But this is not about your team or about the environment. The fact that they're still talking about it being about other people mm -hmm. shows you they're not making or intend to make any changes and that they don't know where the problem is. So why keep him her? And, and why let him be the determinant factor of, I'm going to come up with a list of things that I'm going to fix? I mean, normally, it doesn't quite work that way. If people have no. come against, there's exposure there for the White House. I think it, it's a sign that they're in kind of battle mode that they, everything has gone so wrong, they don't want anything else to be wrong. And so they ignore it. And that's what happens when people are really under siege 
because of the nature of they how... They become insular like yes, that. Yes, and it's, it's all driven by their own decisions, just like for the vice president. It's her. And as long as they, she, they can't admit that it's her, this will continue. That's why the country will have a problem, a continuing problem, because there'll be no adjustments. So here may be something that the White House should be paying attention to. Uh, it's an ongoing protest in Canada over COVID-19 vaccine mandates spilling over into Detroit, Michigan now by way of the Ambassador Bridge, which is the largest international suspension bridge which connects the United States to Canada. Protesters blocked traffic there starting last night. And the mayor of Ottawa, Canada, which is the capital city, is now asking Prime Minister Justin Trudeau for an additional 1,800 police officers to help clear away that mm. convoy. It comes a day after the mayor declared a state of emergency in Ottawa. Our own Tucker Carlson with this. The question is how long before protests like this come here? Clearly, our media are worried about that. What would happen if American truck drivers decided they'd had enough of people like Joe Scarborough and went on strike? What would happen then? Well, this country would stop immediately. No more deliveries of anything. Tammy, do you think this could happen here? And, and from the perspective of the White House, are they paying attention? Anything telling you that they are? Uh, I think, again, they're really looking inward right now, and they... they probably ignore things and make things up in their heads about how things are. We've seen that coming out of Jen Psaki, uh, when it comes to bizarre perspectives. But in this case, you know, Americans tend to not do that kind of thing because the founders were brilliant in setting up elections every two years to take the steam off of things to where you could change them if you wanted to. The Canadian system's very different, right? They're not in America. They don't have our Constitution, the Bill of Rights. But I think that we saw the inkling of that with the school board meetings and parents. Yes. That was the same dynamic without trucks, where Americans were saying very vocally, enough is enough. And that can and will grow. And this has been inspirational for people. They're seeing it. Americans, truckers, the supply line, of course, they remain under attack. I have to say, we had the great resignation. We have people who are not going back to work. That might also be, interestingly, a very quiet protest that is occurring in some uh, fashion. Oh, that's interesting. So we have to see. Uh, it's, Americans tend to not, other than our summers of riots, which was very organized leftist operation, Americans tend to not do this. But we're seeing what's happening. It may take this. We've seen it in Europe when it comes to the huge protests. Mm -hmm. We've seen some protests here. But I think it's possible. Uh, and if we're already seeing them scramble to change the mandate effort, as you talked with that, that great uh, mom from Connecticut. Uh, and I think that we could if they don't get their act together. I was just going to say, you know who sees this are those Democrat governors. Oh, right? yes. Uh, because they're looking at what happened in Virginia with Glenn Youngkin and they're saying, whoa, not me. All right. We'll come back a different day. Yes. Thank you. There'll be Being more. Focus. Thank yes. you, ma'am. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.